hello amazing hackers hope you're all doing well today welcome back to the channel today i'd like to show you the genius of OWASP zap now i love OWASP zap because unlike burp suite it shows you a lot of other things it shows you context wise what it thinks it wants you to see or what it thinks is important to you at that moment zap has a few other features that are free that you have to pay for in burp suite some people don't want to pay for burp suite i get that i don't see the problem with it if it's 400 euros and if it's professionally or for like a uh, bug bounty uh, it's like it's like a small bug bounty so it really depends of course but if you don't want to pay there are a lot of features that zap can do for free for you which is freaking awesome if you don't if you ask me like the automated scanning of course that's an awesome thing that you can do automated scanning you say which url you want to attack now as you can see i am in protected or safe mode i am in protected mode was zap has four modes so you have protected safe standard and attack now as you can see right here you have safe which is no potentially dangerous operations are permitted like spidering, active scanning, fuzzing, forced browsing, breaking, and resending requests. Then protect it, which only allows you to do it on URLs that are in scope. And we have standard, you can do anything. And then we have the attack, which new nodes that are in scope are actively scanned as soon as they are discovered. Now, as you can see, we have a context in wasp zap that is different than what we have in burp suite in burp suite we are used to setting our scope and our proxy options and here we set our scope and our context and we can add a new context or we can just do this on the default context but you can see that we have an include and an out exclude from scope in here we also have technology that we can set up in here and authentications. Now, this is really important, these authentications for later on. Uh, we can set up different users in here. You can set a forced user in here. Session management, how sessions are managed. We can set it up in here. Authorization, we can say, so in this panel, we can configure how authorized and unauthorized requests are handled by the web application. Not that you're going to need that often. We have some access control things that we can set up in here. Custom pages and alert filters. What you're going to be needing most of the time is this include and exclude thing right here. We can also exclude certain URLs from scanner, but usually it's the include and the exclude in context that we're going to use. Then we have our sites right here and as we browse this is gonna fill up with different sites we can show that as well of course we can do some manual exploration and we can add a url in here that might not be in scope right now hexpert.com for example we can launch our browser it's not in scope but i'm gonna put it in standard mode so let's do that again I don't need to at the moment and you can see that it's filling up already. That's what I want to see. Now, as I launch my browser, it's actually going to launch Firefox and it's going to open some sites. I can open those in the request and the response viewer as well, of course, as usual. And up here, I have some options on how I want to set those fields up, set those, uh, give that look here. And as you can see, OWASP Zap is trying to show me what it thinks is important. But I can always set that up myself and show other things that I want to see in here. Same for this window. And I can change the look of these windows as well, of course. And same for this window. Now, let's say I want to attack one of these websites. I can literally right click it and attack it. Now, I can spider that website. I can perform an active scan on that website. Force browsing that's content discovery then we have port scans ajax ajax spiders and fuzzing as well um the forced browsing or let's not start that on this website so the forced browsing as you can see we can look for directories 
or we can look for directories and children we can include this in the context as well or include this uh, site in context the whole website we can run specific applications on here that's not usually going to be important neither is this flag as context excluding from context is something that we might do as well we might not want this we can open this with the recent request and recent editor we can do some more things of course we can exclude this from specific tools show this in the history tab we also have a history tab down here of course we can show that directly uh, we can manage the history tags export all urls to a file Explore, export the selected urls to a file break and here we can break of course we can add a break point and uh, you will know that as interrupter this break point in burp suite that will be your interrupter we use break points in here um and in wasp zap there's of course a lot more of these attacks that you can do for free as well you can also open the technology tab to see what technology is being used you can use the access control tab if you have set up that authentication and those users you can test for access control as well we have an automation tab here as well if you want to add certain automations in here that's a possibility of course if you find so you can perform a soap job you can perform a spider job uh, a delay job i can't really think of something useful right now but it is possible to add one of these automations in here of course and then you can play it um one of the breakpoints that we were talking about right now we don't have any enabled then we can start up our fuzzer as well as we'd like um if we open this up we can get a new fuzzing interface i'm not going to start my fuzzer right now but we can set up the options that we need in here http sessions that's not something we're going to use right now OWASP this is also not something we're going to use but it is available parameters this is the parameter lister really useful of course then you have a port scan option if i want to i can perform a port scan on here i can look for reflection and this is a add-in of course um then i have the spider in here as well and zest results i'm sorry about that noise in the background by the way that's my coffee maker going off now you can set up your proxy as well in your local proxies so if we go into our options uh, local proxies right here we can set up the proxy with the port this is something that we all know from burp suite as well and in here we can also set up different scan contexts so if we do an automatic scan we can set up an active scan as we can see here we can set up how many hosts we want to scan concurrently and how many scanning threads we want to launch per host this is important because you will find that some hosts allow a certain amount of requests per second well that's something that you can use uh, that you can set up right here of course now you also have scan policies as you can see right here so let's look those up scan policies i uh, uh, should be able to find them in here because in here i can also set up some scan rules maybe um, those scan policies basically define how it's going to scan and how it's not going to scan so we have passive scan rules but that's not what i'm looking for active scan input vector is also not what i'm looking for but in here this is also useful because in here it will tell it 
um, burp suite, sorry, I keep saying burp suite, was zap, of course, where to look for parameters. Here we can set up the Ajax Spider as well. This is the anti CSRF token uh, plugin that we can set up in here. Um, let's see where do we have it. We also have a file upload bypass checker. HCP sessions, keyboard language, local proxies, OSP. It should be in here. Rule configurator scripts. No. Well, I can't seem to find it now, but it's in here somewhere. Um, basically, you can set up the active scan uh, policies. I can't really find them right now, but that's okay. Uh, I'll show them when I find them later at the end of the video. So those scan policies, you can set them up. As you can see, I have a default policy right now and I have an XSS policy. Um, my XSS policy is looking for very deep uh, into um, cross-site scripting. And my scan policy for the default is basically what is performed by, def by default by OWASP SAP. Besides that, you also have your add-on manager and here you can see which add-ons you have installed and in here you can also open the marketplace to look for other plugins. You also have some more options in here. Check for updates, show slash enabled fields, set a break on all requests and responses. So if you want to set your breakpoints, that's possible with one click of a button. This is your intercept button from Burp Suite, as you might know it. Add custom HTTP breakpoint, that's also possible. Scan policy manager, that's what we were looking for. Here we can add different scanning policies. And as you can see, client browsing like dumb cross-site scripting information gathering this is what it's looking for miscellaneous this is all that it's looking for and you can set a threshold and you can set a strength and a quality well the quality is, um, is set but you can set your threshold and your strength and my xss policy I'll open it for you guys you can see that this is off DOM based um, I almost have nothing on from this. I almost have nothing on from injections. Just cross-site scripting is on right here. And then some SQL injection stuff, some miscellaneous. But I try to put a lot of things off here. Well, I should put my cross-site scripting a lot stronger. So we can put these to high, basically. All of these cross-site scripting vulnerabilities we should put these to high um, thresholds and insane strength cross-site scripting scanning. But we can make any policy that we want. We can give it a name. We can import and export policies as well. And that's basically the advantages of OWASP ZAP. Now, OWASP ZAP also has, this is something cool that I haven't shown you guys. If you start up OWASP ZAP with a browser, you will see that OWASP ZAP has a HUD which shows you things about the website that you're currently on, the page that you're currently on, and the website in total. And that's it, what I would like to say about ZAP. Now, if we decide to close OWASP ZAP, we, um, in OWASP ZAP, we might have a um, oh, this is also something that might be interesting. We can generate a report, a ZAP scanning report, as you can see. But as you close ZAP, it will ask, do you want to save ZAP or do you want to discard all of the resources? And discarding all of the resources, what it means by that is OS ZAP basically starts up a database and a server. And everything that I save right now, if I save things in a session, it says saving session. That is because OSB Zap is persistent. So that is really interesting because everything that I do right now is persisted throughout my session. And if I close it down right now, you can see that I have some more resources, the current automation plan that I'm going to lose if I discard is because I haven't saved it yet. I can do that automation of 
I can save this plan separately, but I don't really want to. It's nothing interesting. The rest is saved, so I'm going to discard this. As you can see, it's shutting down its server and its database. Um, and that's basically OASP's app. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope I was able to show you some of the features and convince you to at least try it because it's really, it's an interesting uh, replacement for Burp Suite. It has a lot of features available that Burp Suite would have. And it, it allows you to do a, um, a basic pen test, in my opinion. It definitely supports you with all of the features that you need for a basic pen test. Now, um, in my opinion, is OWASP Zap as good as Burp Suite when it comes to active scanning? But of course not. You're kind of asking me to compare people from OWASP Zap who spent their free time and energy into making a tool, free time, free energy into making a tool, whereas you have, whereas you have Burp Suite, which is a big organization, of course, they're going to be more advanced when it comes to that stuff. That's If they weren't, I would be very surprised. But that doesn't mean that you shouldn't try to at least use both, because both are looking for different things. OSB Zap is scanning for different things, and Burp Tweet is scanning for different things. You should at least try both and compare the results and see if there's nothing in Zap that's not in Burp Tweet, in my opinion. I hope, you, I hope you guys liked this video. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know what you are going to use. Are you going to use Burp Suite or are you going to use OWASP Zap after this video? Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye amazing hackers.